Good afternoon, dear colleagues and guests. Let me declare open a session of the Dissertation Council for the Defense of Thesis by Ian Simon, with a degree of Candidate of Political Science, Academic Specialization 23004, Political Problems of International Relations, Global and Regional Development, on the theme Public Diplomacy and Foreign Policy of the United States and China. Under order of St. Petersburg University, dated the 23rd of March 2020, number 2304-1, me, Councillor of Konstantin Arsenevich, Doctor of Political Science, Professor of the Department of Theory and History of International Relations at St. Petersburg University, was appointed Chairman of this Dissertation Council. Members uh, of the, uh, the 17th of March, number 2001-1, and on the 15th of May, 2020, number 4317 one members of the Dissertation Council were appointed. Let me introduce them. According uh, to St. Petersburg order of the 23rd of March, 2020, 2304-1, our session is held in the remote access mode, which includes my colleagues, members of the Council. And same order appointed members of the council. Uh, uh, let me introduce them. Lagutina Maria Lvovna, Doctor of Political Science, Associate Professor of the Department of World Politics at St. Petersburg University. Maria Lvovna, can you see and hear us? Yes, all is well. Jula Blova Victoria Ivanovna, Doctor of Historical Sciences, Associate Professor, Head of the Department of American Studies, School of International Relations, Russian State University of Humanities. Victoria Ivanna, uh, I can hear you. Thank you. Lebedeva Olga Vladimirna, Doctor of Historical Sciences, Associate Professor, Department of Diplomacy of Moscow State Institute of International Relations, University and Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation. Olga Vladimirovna, can you see? Can you hear us? Yes. There's no sound. Olga Vladimirovna, please switch the microphone on at the bottom of the page, on the left. No sound we cannot hear. The the microphone is on, it's just not working because you can see there's no red marker. Let's <laughs> uh, take a technical break. Dear colleagues, we have to you have to call a technical break.
on it. Let us continue. Let's continue. Let me once again introduce Olga Vladimirovna Lebedeva, Doctor of Historical Sciences, Associate Professor of the Department of Diplomacy of Moscow State Institute of International Relations, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation. Can you see and hear? As, yes, I beg your pardon for this delay. Uh, that's okay, things happen. Also, Gregory, the next council member, Gregory John Simon, Doctor of Philology, Uppsala University, Sweden. Greg, can you see? Can you hear us? Yes, everything is functioning. Uh, uh, Falkin, Vladimir Ivanovich, Doctor of Historical Sciences, Professor, uh, Professor, Head of the Department of International Humanitarian Relations of St. Petersburg University, is absent for a good reason. And degree applicant in Semen, can you see? Can you hear us? <laughs> Also, in touch with us is uh, the academic advisor of the applicants, Vikova Natalia Alexandrovna, Doctor of Historical Sciences, Professor, Head of the Department of American Studies at Petersburg University. Natalia Alexandrovna, can you see? Can you hear us? Yes, I can see and hear you. Thank you. So, all the members of the dissertation council, as well as the applicants and the academic advisor, are present. And we can start our work. Dear colleagues, since our meeting is held in the remote access mode under St. Petersburg University order, the 23rd of March, number 23, I invite all the participants to follow the procedure closely in case there's a technical failure and you stop seeing or hearing someone, please let me know. I will call it technical break until such issues are eliminated. In case the connection with me is lost, I instruct uh, next person on the list, Lagutina Maria Lvovna, to uh, call a technical break. And uh, and if connection with me is not restored to continue to run the meeting, uh, Maria Lvovna, do you agree? Yes, I agree. Okay. Dear council members, you, yes. do you have any objections to that? Thank you. Let's continue. Also, I'd like to inform you uh, to improve quality of connection. Dear colleagues, please keep your microphones switched off, but remember to switch them on when you're given the floor. Also, let me inform you that our meeting is being recorded and broadcast online at the Petersburg University website, and these speeches are being simultaneously translated from Russian into English and from English into Russian. The applicant's page currently displays an email address to which, uh, during the meeting, anyone can send their opinions or questions to the applicant regarding her thesis and the ongoing scientific discussion of her presentation. Those questions shall be forwarded to me by the technical support department that they read them out. The questions should be related strictly to the applicant's presentation, the content of her thesis, and must include the full name, position, and place of work of the author of the question. Uh, questions. According uh, to the Lord of Awarding Academic degrees at St. Petersburg Universities, uh, a candidate and approved by the local uh, legislation. Uh, uh, the session of the uh, dissertation council is constituted if at least two thirds of the approved members of the council are present, but not less than four persons. Our dissertation council consists of six members. Five members are present. Uh, Hawking is uh, absent. Uh, Lim Lunch is absent for a good reason. All uh, members are in their remote interactive mode. The audio-visual contact has been established to all of them and the degree applicant. Thus, there's a quorum. And we can start our work. I instruct cur the curator of today's defense, uh, an officer of the decision council activity support department, to draw up the attendance list in which uh, the 
present members of the decision council shall be listed and to indicate their work mode. In this case, remote. Also, let me, before we start, set forth the following procedure of today's session with a total duration of approximately two hours. First, the chairman's summary report on the main content of documents submitted by the applicant and their compliance with the applicable reg regulations answers to possible questions. Approximately five minutes. Second, a brief presentation by the degree applicant outlining the key points of her study. Approximately 15 minutes. Third, questions to the applicant strictly on her report, no more than two minutes per question. Please call a technical break. I beg your pardon. I have some technical issues because I'm having so now everything is, is fine. The colleagues, can you see? Can you hear me? Yes, you can. Okay. Let us continue. Four answers of the applicant. Uh, no more than five minutes for all the questions. Five speeches of all members of the dissertation council with their reviews with uh, their opinion of uh, qu and questions and suggestions to the applicant no more than 10 minutes for each speaker six speech of the chairman and his review approximately 10 minutes seven answers of the applicant to questions and comments made by authors of the dissertation council presentation of the chairman of question which came in the course of uh, discussion and scientific discussion uh, the session is being broadcast at the university website nine answers of the applicant no more than two minutes per question 10 speech of the academic advisor of the applicant no more than three minutes 11 uh, discussion by the dissertation council members of the results of the defense uh, for the uh, during which the broadcast shall be switched off. Twelve, open individual voting. The chairman of the council should count the votes and the results should be recorded in the minutes of the meeting. Thirteen, a decision on awarding or not awarding the academic degree. Fourteen, closing remarks of the applicant. No more than two minutes. Dear colleagues. Do you have any questions or objections regarding this procedure? If there are no objections, let me start running it. But before, I kindly request you to switch off the sound of your mobile phones off. Thank you for understand your understanding. So let's start the session. First of all, I'd like to give the floor to the academic advisor of INSEMEN, uh, a doctor of historical sciences, professor, head of the Department of American Studies, the British University, Svetlana Natalia Alexander. Natalia Alexander, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, dear chairman. Thank you, dear colleagues, for managing to join this unique procedure. Many thanks to our colleagues from Moscow and Sweden, because now I have the opportunity to thank and let me uh, say just a couple of words about our degree applicant in Simen. Let me interrupt you. Right now, you just have to introduce the applicant and uh, the floor will be given to you again in the end. Uh, let me introduce in Simen. Uh, uh, it's just by saying a couple of words, Insemen has been a student uh, of our university for more than 10 years. Uh, she is uh, graduated from a bachelor's program, master's program and doctoral program. And uh, so she is one of our talented students. And I'd like to say it's very important that she achieved such a good command of the Russian language and of, of English language, of course. 
So it's obvious that what she has written seems to be the first thesis uh, in the true digital uh, epoch. The uh, uh, international relations got digital, and she managed to to demonstrate uh, where United States are and how the uh, Chinese digital diplomacy is uh, implemented and uh, China is falling behind the United States. And today in Semen uh, has a sufficient number of publications in Russian and in Chinese. And moreover, the most important, my most important uh, thing I'd like to mention, uh, hopefully uh, her defense will go well and in Semen will uh, be employed by one of the Chinese universities. So she will start her teaching and uh, scientific career. Uh, thank you very much. I hope that today's defense will go very well. And uh, uh, let me wish success to all of you in such digital, in this digital procedure. Dear Chairman, I'm uh, done. Thank you, Natalia Alexandrovna. Uh, uh, you will give, be given the floor again at the end of our session. Uh, so next, I have to give my summary report. Dear colleagues, I'd like to say that the thesis by Semen for the degree of candidate of political science, academic specialization uh, 230004, political problems of international relations, global and regional development on the theme public diplomacy, foreign policy of the United States and China was accepted for defense by the order of the academic secretary of St. Petersburg University on the, dated the 16th of March, 2020, number 1972 slash one. Inzeman uh, wrote her thesis at St. Petersburg University and her academic advisor uh, was a doctor of historical sciences, head of the Department of American Studies at St. Petersburg University, Svetkova Natalia Alexandrovna. The number of publications of the applicant, uh, which set out the main scientific results of the thesis, according to the enclosed list is six. In peer-reviewed scientific journals from the list approved by the Ministry of Education and Science of the Russian Publication 3, in journals indexed in the Scientometric databases, Favorite Science and Scopus, no publications. The applicant submitted to the Academic Secretary of Petersburg University a full package of documents for acceptance of her thesis for consideration defense, and all the documents comply with Article 12 of Section 3 of the order on awarding and academic degrees, all the documents submitted by the applicant according to the information I received from the curator comply with the requirements and I kept in the attestation file of the applicant. Copies are available from the officer of the dissertation council support department, curator of today's session, Natalia Yurivna Rubtsova, who's currently online. Before I give the floor to the degree applicant, Dear colleagues, let me ask you, do you have any general questions to the degree applicant, including whether it's necessary to disclose and review the entire list of documents submitted by the applicant? Yet. No. Well, I see there are no questions. So, dear degree applicant, let's give the floor to you. Uh, let me remind you that you have 15 minutes. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, dear chairman and dear dissertation council members. Uh, let me introduce uh, to your attention my thesis on the theme public diplomacy in foreign policy of the United States and China, relevance of the uh, my research, uh, USA and China leading countries in international relations. The USA is a traditional leader. China's rise in recent years has allowed it to expand its influence on the international arena. And undoubtedly, China's voice and its proposals for solving the uh, uh, relevant world problems play a significant role. In both countries, public diplomacy is used as an effective tool to achieve foreign policy goals and to protect the national interests. It expands the dialogue between peoples and creates a positive image of the country abroad. The United States has established an effective system for implementing 
education, cultural programs in public diplomacy and has created a large scale mechanism for international broadcasting and digital diplomacy. In recent years, China has become one of the priority countries in the US public diplomacy. In the past decade, China has paid great attention to the role of public diplomacy in its foreign policy. The public diplomacy is based on the foreign policy concept of the Chinese government. Through public diplomacy, China has greatly improved its image, promoted, promotes its initiatives on the international arena, actively represents its voice and takes part in so-called global governance. Thus, studying the public diplomacy of China uh, in the United States, as well as the projects aimed at each other, is necessary. A scientific novelty of the thesis is to condu in conducting a comprehensive study of the public diplomacy development in China and the United States. For the first time, a comparative analysis of the mechanism and projects of the United States and PRC public diplomacy is given. Uh, I have identified projects the US and PRC. The thesis demonstrates weaknesses and strengths of the public diplomacy of the two countries, which I will talk about in detail in the end of my speech. It revealed the covers of new documents, as well as the digital dimension of the modern public diplomacy of the two countries. And finally, the theories and concepts that are used in the study of the public diplomacy are systematized. The, the subject of my study is the foreign policy of the United States of, uh, of America and of People's Republic of China. The subject is the public diplomacy of the People's Republic of China and the United States, its mechanism, main forms and methods, and specific public diplomacy programs and projects in the target country. The purpose of my work is identifying the role, mechanism, and specific public diplomacy projects in the foreign policy of the United States and the People's Republic of China. To achieve this goal, the following tasks were pursued to review the main stages of the public diplomacy development in the US and the People's Republic of China, to analyze modern concepts and theories of international relations in the study of public diplomacy of the two countries, describe the main activities of the main state and public agencies of the countries studied and their contribution to the promotion of public diplomacy for the target audience to identify effective forms and methods of public diplomacy of the United States of America and the People's Republic of China, to compare the set of tools of China, the United States of America in public diplomacy, and to give a comparative analysis, examine specific US projects and programs in China and vice versa. The methodological basis of the, my work is based on a set of scientific methods and principles systematic approach, institutional functional methods, comparative methods. The key findings of the study and provisions put forward for defense. First conclusion, the development of public diplomacy is closely linked to the political goals of the country. There are three main stages in the US and Chinese public diplomacy. The main stages of development of public diplomacy in the US are the period uh, when US entered World War One until the end of World War Two. Second, uh, from 1950s until the end of Cold War. Uh, third stage, from 2001 to the present. In China, uh, there are three main stages. First stage started in 1949 until 1970s of the 20th century. Second stage from 1980 until the end of the Cold War. Third stage from the end of the Cold War up to the present. Second conclusion, the theories of realism, liberalism and constructivism explain peculiarities of the US of public diplomacy development. The use of a particular concept depends largely on the subject matter and focus of the research. This theory, and usually researchers rely on a variety of the following approaches. In more detail, the conceptual framework of the study of the US public diplomacy is driven by concepts such as soft power, smart power, and sharp power. 
sociocultural concepts such as the cultural imperialism, Americanization and cultural exchange are also used by various researchers. Uh, also used the mechanism uh, of US and PRC um, public diplomacy consists of government agencies, but public organizations also play an important role in promotion of public diplomacy. In foreign policy, uh, third conclusion is, um, uh, um, consists of government agencies, public organizations that play an equally important role in uh, this uh, clear division of functions at different stages of public diplomacy and the Chinese structure of government departments is uh, so as follows. The number of uh, in all agencies involved is much smaller. The division of responsibilities is uncertain and and as as a result, uh, the number of organizations, the mechanism uh, lacks the mechanism of ass assessing the eff efficiency. As a result, uh, there's no analysis of connection uh, between invested funds and results achieved, as it happens in the U.S. U.S. pays close attention to experts in the field by providing them with a complete social security package. In China too, in recent years, special attention has been paid to a specialized group of people. But at that, in my opinion, there's not enough funding available to attract specialists to such work. Between uh, the uh, government and civil society organizations in the US uh, for the promotion of public diplomacy, the so-called revolving door is which helps to transform the roles of experts between different bodies to work effectively in public diplomacy in china this type of mechanism does not exist uh, next conclusion is non-governmental organization china the united states and have such characteristics as flexibility and professionalism play an important role in creating a positive image of the state, disseminating state values and setting the international standards, facilitating informal dialogue between governments of different countries that play a role of a bridge in bilateral and multilateral diplomacy. Uh, in this so we analyzed uh, two uh, NGOs of two countries according to the following criteria scale sources of funding ways of working with the participation of the state uh, and uh, influence scope of influence etc and by number uh, where uh, US uh, was ahead of China but the scale organizations in, in China and NGOs is uh, much uh, larger than that in the US. As for sources of funding, in the US, NGOs have a wide range of options, including public funds and donations made by individuals and businesses. In this regard, American NGOs are relatively independent. And uh, the main funding for public organizations in China comes from the government. Uh, as a result, uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, their activity depends on the government policy. And if we proceed from the ways they perform, U.S. organizations are directly involved in the activities of the U.S. government on public diplomacy. In terms of breadth of influence, American NGOs also have won over China due to rich history and experience, active in interactive role with the media uh, and ability to communicate with the ordinary people. Five, the forms of methods of public diplomacy have developed unevenly in these two countries. China is more eager to use the traditional forms of public diplomacy and is in the early stage of transition to digital form. And the, new, the US has flexible and diverse forms of public diplomacy. 
the methods of public diplomacy are becoming more specialized. And I'm moving from the traditional to digital forms as as seen in the US digital projects in China. Six, conclusion, China is an important strategic country in the global scheme of US public diplomacy. The US uses traditional methods of public diplomacy, such as educational programs, such as Chinese American Fulbright program, international radio broadcasting, Voice of America, Free Asia, Moreover, the US government is adapting to the rapid pace of internet development is using this new new media such as Babel, uh, Babel, WeChat, as well as Twitter to communicate with millions of users in China. Seven conclusion, Confucius Institutes and Clusters are one of the most successful examples of Chinese public diplomacy in the US. But the rapid expansion and multiplication of such language centers has threatened the US government. And in this regard, the US side has taken a number of uh, measures. And in our opinion, in order to eliminate this problem, the Chinese government should pay attention to the, the media and improve the method of teaching Chinese language and ways of cooperation with the US schools and universities. Eight and uh, final conclusion, the role of mass media is significant and is a trend towards digitalization of the traditional printed media. Recently, many media outlets have been actively working to attract English speaking audiences. However, the author sees such problems of public diplomacy of China and the US in the field of mass media as the lack of highly qualified specialists, insufficient financing, uh, limitations coming from the state regime for development, problems of Chinglish and English news reports, as well as the lack of interactivity between mass media and the internet users. The digital diplomacy is a promising and a promising is a, a promising area of public diplomacy in general and of media diplomacy in particular and the uh, take into account such as social networks should be uh, dear chairman dear members of the dissertation council my presentation is over thank you for your attention thank you in Sumen, for your presentation dear colleagues do you have questions to the applicant Uh, let me ask a question. I have a question in your presentation and your thesis. Uh, you use this term, the sharp force, sharp power. Can you explain a little bit what you mean by this sharp power term in China and in the US? Thank you very much. Thank you for this interesting question this term was uh, appeared in the united states and it means that and this between soft power and hard power so they use some destructive methods uh, in the soft power and they also use against military methods of diplomacy. Thank you. Maria Lvovna, are you satisfied? Yes. Okay. May I ask a question? Yes, welcome. Could you ex clarify? I read your thesis very carefully. Which project? Uh, on digital diplomacy are implemented by China in the social media. I mean, projects uh, targeted at American audiences. Uh, can we really talk about such projects? 
Thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, for your question, uh, Professor Victoria Ivanovna. Indeed, in China, though China at the moment has is in the beginning of transition from uh, tra traditional mass media to digital diplomacy, but such spheres are developing of uh, modern public diplomacy as a promotion of uh, official accounts of uh, Chinese agencies in Russia and pla platforms such as Twitter and YouTube. And because of that, uh, regardless, some limitations of access uh, to ca of continental China, they still they can still influence the public opinion of Chinese uh, Chinese uh, Chinese li living abroad. Thank you. Thank you. So, what are these projects? Are these projects, or uh, do you mean content? Can you actually call this uh, a real project, uh, something that has a tar target, uh, because this process is in its beginning. So this, uh, I, uh, there are no uh, re ready projects, uh, mean uh, news content on official level. So, so, but our government is working on that. So the, uh, you mean news content? Yes, thank you. Thank you. May I ask a question? Uh, how do you evaluate the role of the Chinese foreign ministry in public diplomacy, digital diplomacy, how efficient it is, uh, work of Chinese embassies? Thank you for this interesting question, Professor Lebedeva. Of course, Could you please repeat the question? Role of Chinese foreign ministry in public diplomacy, digital diplomacy. Do you think it is efficient? Yeah, now I understand. Thank you very much once again for your question. Indeed, uh, foreign ministry of China in recent years is trying to develop this sphere but because uh, they are subject uh, since 1949, since the People's Republic of China was established, has been uh, reformed many times. So the, the structures, uh, there's no uh, structure, there's no single governing structure that would control all pub organizations of public diplomacy uh, I this new new methods of public diplomacy the so-called social media millions of uh, internet users uh, is foreign the ministry has an account uh, sub, uh, has millions Спасибо. of subscribers. Thank you. Спасибо. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dear colleagues, uh, do we have more uh, questions at this moment? If there are no questions, in the main, thank you for your presentation and for answering the questions. Let's proceed to the next item of our agenda, speeches of the dissertation council with their reviews and general uh, uh, assessment of your work. Before we proceed, let me ask the applicant, uh, Insemen, how would you prefer to answer questions after each review or give all your answers in together in the end? I would like to answer all comments in the end. Uh, say, okay, let's do that. Also, I'd like to mention that there are no external reviews. Yes. 
And also, I'd like to inform you that since all the reviews have been published at St. Petersburg University website uh, and are open to the public, anyone can read them. I suggest to the council members to read and to focus on the key points and questions to the degree applicant. Uh, yeah. Do council members have objections to that? Thank you. In that case, I'd like to give the floor to Maria Lvovna Lagutina. Maria Lvovna, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Konstantin Arsenevich. Uh, let me introduce my represent my review to the thesis by Insimen. Let me start with the positive things. Uh, what I found interesting, it was very interesting for me, and I think uh, the topic is highly relevant. We know a lot about the public diplomacy in the United States, and China is, uh, 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 of course, it was very interesting to learn about uh, the emergence of public diplomacy in China, and more so that the degree applicant is a citizen of China and has access uh, to sources in the Chinese language. And of course, uh, what also impressed me is the author uh, does a, a try to study all types of public diplomacy, but focuses uh, on most important types of uh, foreign policy of uh, USA and China and their results. And of course, as was mentioned, uh, let me proceed to my comments. Uh, in general, I have a positive opinion of the thesis. I think uh, this is a success. I see it uh, has been written independently. The author has used a vast number of sources and literature, but I still have a number of comments. My first comment uh, is on the degree of scientific development of the problem uh, in the introduction. I think it's uh, uh, the I think this uh, section is too modest and the author should pay more attention to this and take into account the fact that the author mainly built her research on the work with documents it was necessary to elaborate in more detail uh, the degree of uh, Russian Western and Chinese historiography second it's unacceptable to refer to the works of other authors in the conclusions of paragraphs and chapters, authors, uh, conclusions in the thesis, conclusions uh, should uh, be made by the author. So this is your and express your own opinions of the author. Uh, but such uh, uh, ambiguities occur in the work. For example, on page 24 of the thesis. Third comment. The author is educational literature as sources. I know that uh, used a textbook by her academic advisor, Alexandra Tsvetkova, but there are rules uh, that uh, educational literature cannot be used uh, as the source for a fourth comment. Uh, the thesis write a lot about the Chinese initiative, Belt and Road. For me, it was very interesting uh, because uh, this is also the subject of my research. Uh, the mistake is that the author uh, neglected the fact that since 2018, the project, the initiative, one uh, belt, one road is called uh, Belt and Road. Uh, you continue using the old and uh, in the work on public diplomacy. I think this is quite important. And the last official signs are not source cannot be sources you use them as a group of sources as uh, document but the sources are documents published on this size this, unfortunately this is a fairly common mistake but uh, i have to point it out but uh, these comments uh, are of a technical nature and do not affect the overall positive uh, opinion of the thesis which in my opinion is an original study on an important and relevant topic and this has great scientific significance, it's beyond any doubt, both for Russian science and for Chinese and uh, US 
I dare say that. So the thesis by In Simen uh, on public diplomacy in foreign policy of the US and China corresponds to the main requirements set by the order of uh, 2016 on the order of awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And the degree applicant in Simen uh, deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of political science, spe uh, academic special 23004. Uh, clause 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated by the author. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Maria Lvovna. Now I would like to give the floor uh, to uh, Victoria Ivanovna Zhuravlova. Uh, thank you, Konstantin Arsenevich. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, uh, some comments. Um, I may want to join uh, my uh, the previous uh, comments made by my colleague, but first I'd like to uh, comment on the advantages of the web because the theme is highly relevant. We live in the digital era uh, of uh, international relations are going through an interesting phase, new qualitative phase, and uh, the fact that the degree applicant decided uh, to compare how United States and China work in this sphere, considering roles they play in political process, global political processes and uh, priorities. This is very important and uh, deserves praise. It seemed very interesting to me that how the author uh, structures the theoretical basis uh, mentioned by the degree applicant as an attempt to combine uh, concepts um, models of public diplomacy uh, and relate them to uh, international relations theories, uh, political anthropological theories, and uh, how uh, public diplomacy is understood in uh, uh, China. This is a, an interesting approach. I have not come across such approach uh, before. I think this is an advantage of the thesis. Uh, apart from that, it uh, seemed very interesting how the author uh, reviews process of promoting uh, Chinese uh, Chinese uh, cultural values, uh, how it how focuses are made. The main focus is on long term projects and not on addressing uh, today's tasks. Uh, such comprehensive nature of the study and an attempt to make a comparative analysis takes the author to an interesting conclusion of a, a, symmet a symmetrical nature of public diplomacy. Uh, so this is very interesting to me, uh, speaking of uh, potential of uh, public de development of public diplomacy in China. It, uh, I found interesting to annex uh, information about Confu Confucius institutes and the list of uh, Chinese founders, it may seem uh, naive, this scheme suggested by uh, uh, the applicant, uh, but uh, in it, I find interesting humanitarian aspects and the fact that uh, she analyzed data on websites, I think that deserves praise. In general, I'd like to say that the thesis is a success. I agree with the opinion of the previous reviewer, and it seems to me that the success uh, and the uh, mid contribution is a uh, command of research methods, uh, a good command of theory and literature. In that sense, I have no doubt. Yet I have some cr critical uh, remarks as that, as any work uh, at the same time, uh, it, uh, or any scientific paper has uh, drawbacks. So here they are. So let me start uh, that the uh, literature review and uh, is uh, there is too descriptive and not analytical. Should be uh, should uh, requires additions. So this section, in fact, is very important when the author uh, describes historiography. Uh, the author shows what has been done before. Uh, this uh, shows novelty. 
So this section, this part of the thesis is very important. And here there is lots of room for improvement. Also, it seems to me that it doesn't make sense to include works of Russian, Chinese and American scientists. Uh, these are not sources. Uh, this is historiography. This is literature, scientific literature uh, that uh, can be used, classified. But uh, so here, uh, uh, this part needs clarification. Second comment is that uh, when characterizing uh, evolution of public diplomacy in the US and China, the author should have paid more attention not only to uh, external but internal political factors because public diplomacy directly related with the concept of uh, I concept of self-imaging. So when you make a multi-factor analysis, uh, you should not forget the uh, internal political context uh, because here uh, identity is created which turns public policy into uh, space and public diplomacy has always worked on that and still works on that, still working. And my final, my last comment, in the last chapter, the author gives interesting statistical data, uh, which I liked, I found very interesting. They illustrate results of uh, uh, US work in social media of China, but as it seemed to me, the uh, text of the last two uh, uh, chap chapters have uh, no information, lacks information on educational cultural projects that would make conclusions more uh, convincing. Yet uh, all the all these comments uh, they uh, refer mostly to uh, prospects of the work and do not affect the overall positive opinion uh, of the thesis. And in Semen, uh, uh, public diplomacy and foreign policy of the U.S. and China is an original study dedicated on a, a topical uh, theme. Uh, the conclusions are well grounded, logical, independent, and all this uh, allow me to say that the thesis corresponds to the main requirements set uh, at uh, St. Petersburg University, and uh, uh, the degree applicant in Semen deserves to be awarded academic degree of candidate of political sciences, uh, specialty 23004, political problems of international relations. Uh, global and regional development cl clause 11 of the above mentioned has not been violated by the author. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Victoria Ivana. Now I would like to give the floor to Olga Vladimirovna. Uh, dear Dear Konstantin Arsenevich, thank you very much for this opportunity to ask some questions. But first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, the degree applicant and her academic advisor. Uh, the work was a success. The work is very interesting, and uh, as mentioned by my colleagues already, uh, well, the main uh, strong point is uh, independence of the author. Also, I'd like to praise uh, the author for choosing, uh, for being brave to choose such a, an interesting and complicated subject. I think the study uh, it was made on a large scale, and what is very nice is independently, it was conducted independently. Moreover, it seems to me that uh, for some reason, uh, the, uh, this theme seems to be uh, close, maybe, to the author, maybe she had an opportunity uh, to learn uh, about it in practice, uh, because uh, she seems to display good understanding of how you learn it, of course, it's relevant of the theme is obvious, Личные дипломатии, они имеют очень красную значимую роль во внешней политике ведущего государства, и США и Китай являются, конечно, лидерами в данной области. Мне очень понравилась структура работы. Диссертация имеет очень четкую логическую структуру. Здесь, наверное, прослеживается рука научного руководителя, потому что очень все хорошо структурировано. Мне хочу также отметить, что... Я ознакомилась с некоторыми статьями, некоторыми публикациями СМН по данной тематике. Мне очень понравилось, хотел бы отметить особо статью в журнале «Дипломатическая служба» о роли и месте личного образа в 
Да, мы знаем, что харизма политического лидера также очень действенный инструмент для этой силы. Ну, очень много достоинств, плюсов, которые, конечно, нет, к сожалению, времени отмечать. И так как я выступаю в роли оппонента, хотелось бы высказать ряд замечаний, которые, наверное, можно рассматривать не только как замечания, но и как какие-то пожелания, направленные на дальнейшее улучшение работы. Значит, во-первых, мне кажется, что Нужно более четко было проследить взаимосвязь внешней и внутренней аудитории в концепции публичной дипломатии Китая. Так как в настоящее время китайское руководство продолжает значительное усилие для популяризации национальной культуры и исторического наследия с целью повышения престижа страны прежде всего в глазах собственных граждан. Но во-вторых, Опять же, с этим был связан мой вопрос. Uh, Мне кажется, что работа бы выиграла, uh, если бы вы были выпукла, отразили бы роль Министерства иностранных дел Китая, особенно показав его координирующую роль в проведении политики мягкой силы. В частности, я знаю, что существует специальный департамент информации и печати при китайском МИДе. Вот можно было более детально проанализировать функции этого отдела. Конечно, в параграф 2.1.3 я бы добавила пункт об инструментах публичной дипломатии, среди которых можно выделить перекрестные годы, да, различные национальные культуры, международное сотрудничество по линии библиотек и музеев, вот этот весь культурный аспект. И я бы, конечно, более четко очертила круг проблем, с которыми сталкивается сегодня публичная дипломатия. Да, например, это вот традиционное стремление зарубежных китайцев жить в изоляции, вот как описать более подробно. Но у меня есть пятое пожелание, самое важное, это ни в коем случае не бросать заниматься этой темой, работать над ней дальше, может быть, ее расширить за счет рассмотрения России, да, чтобы получился такой треугольник Россия, США и Китай, как они взаимодействуют в этой области, это было очень интересно. Вот. Но, естественно, высказанные замечания, они никаким образом не влияют на общую положительную оценку диссертации, которая является оригинальным исследованием. И в заключение хочу сказать, что диссертация Инсемен на тему публичной дипломатии и внешней политики США и Китая соответствует основным требованиям, установленным приказом от 1 сентября 2016 года, номер 68-21-21, по порядке присуждения ученых в степени Санкт-Петербургского государственного университета, а соискатель ИСМН присуждение ученых в степени кандидата политических наук по специальности 23-00-04, политические проблемы в международных отношениях глобальных и регионального развития. Пункт 11 указанного порядка диссертанта не нарушен. Спасибо за внимание. Спасибо за внимание. Мультидисциплинарный исследование и компаративный исследование, который объединяет много информации, которая была предыдущей дисперсирована. И объединяет это в очень временной манере, тоже, учитывая, что происходит в международных отношениях сейчас. Поэтому, смотря... I mean, it's a rich set of literature which has been introduced, and the flow is reasonably logical. I mean, as has been said already, although uh, the public diplomacy is not theoretical, it's more conceptual, the, the thesis is more descriptive, uh, but it goes towards its general stated purpose of revealing the role mechanism Uh, and public diplomacy projects and foreign policies of US and China. Um, looking at, at it, uh, th this is presented not only in terms of what is happening recently, but historically, uh, and this is necessary uh, because what happens today is based on historical developments. Uh, and this is 
an important element that is included. So um, one of the things which probably the thesis would have benefited from uh, if a specific research question had been stated and one which has uh, theoretical or at least conceptual implications. Uh, for example, if, if it was about um, identifying the conceptual role and uh, of public diplomacy um, as a concept and a practice in the foreign policies of uh, US and China. I mean, th this would uh, give more uh, direction uh, rather than uh, how do you order all of this uh, information otherwise? And it would make uh, for some more um, revealing conclusions. I mean, you list all of these things which you did very clearly in your presentation now, uh, but what are the wider theoretical and conceptual implications of those different points of conclusion that you made? Uh, and that kind of is missing in its present form. I mean, something to think about in the, in the future when you develop your career as an academic. Now, um, looking at it, there are a few other, I should say, relatively minor points. One of them relates to language. Now, these are uh, somewhat minor issues, but they can distract. Uh, for example, uh, sometimes you replace the word discourse uh, with the word intercourse. Now, of course, uh, discourse is about uh, rhetorical interaction and intercourse is of a more intimate interaction, should we say. Uh, so you need to be careful with these uh, these words. I mean, they might sound close to a non-native speaker, but when a native speaker reads it, uh, I mean, it's a bit distracting, uh, but just to be careful uh, with that. Now, on uh, in it, you mentioned these different, um, different things like international community, like this. Now, when you introduce these things, you need to sort of explain what is the international community. I'm presuming you're referring to the hegemonic global liberal order uh, in this case, but you need to spell it out because this might mean different things to, to different people. So you need to be just uh, a bit careful. And sometimes I, I think you get a little bit too, um, what would you say, positive about some of what US public diplomacy um, offers and says, uh, because they give a very glossy image, uh, but essentially the underlying uh, purpose is exactly the same as Chinese. Uh, they just uh, frame it differently with different uh, lovely sounding values and norms. And I mean, this, you can clearly see this today with, with the, what's happening with the coronavirus, these different sets of opposing norms. Now, um, for example, when, when you're looking at um, uh, the Committee for Public Information, they, are, they, of course, did a lot of domestic propaganda to the American public as well as the global public. And you just need to look at books like uh, George Creel, who was the head of the Committee for Public Information, wrote uh, what was basically uh, an autobiography, uh, How We Sold America. And I mean, here he details all those different elements of US public diplomacy, which was including propaganda, not only against foreign publics, but also against domestic publics. And so, yeah, you need to take this more critical approach to some of those different elements which are presented. Uh, for example, if we're looking at these uh, effects 
of Arab Spring and Euromaidan. Uh, the, these are far from being spontaneous. I mean, th this is the general accepted narrative in the West. But when you look at it, I mean, and you mentioned these tech camps. I mean, these were organized in US embassies, not only in Ukraine, but in, uh, in countries in Middle East, North Africa, exactly before these so revolutionary waves happened. And they were training uh, basically people how to undermine their governments uh, in terms of communication using uh, social media uh, and this kind of citizen journalism. And I mean, the, the role of US, uh, for example, uh, Radio Liberty or Al Khara. That these kinds of elements of US public diplomacy do have quite uh, a dubious record. I mean, if we look at Radio, uh, Radio Free Europe, in the 1956 Hungarian uprising, uh, it was then controlled directly by the CIA, and they called for uh, the Hungarian people to rise up because the US would support them. And the Hungarian people rose up they were put down uh, and the US got to see how the Soviet Union would react to a, a provocation like this. Uh, and also this, this issue, th there seems to be sometimes a conflation between measure of activity and measure of effect. There is an important distinction. So if we look at measure of activity, I deliver 500 uh, leaflets to 500 people. That's the measure of activity. The measure of effect does not mean automatically that those uh, five, uh, those leaflets influence every single person that I gave one to. Uh, that this might be something quite different, and it usually is, uh, depending on how effective the message is, the timing, and these things. I mean, so, for example, if we look at Al Khara, uh, I think you mentioned this radio station in the Middle East. I mean, potentially it reaches millions of people, but uh, in terms of its measure of effect, it is utterly miserable because it does not have any credibility or legitimacy amongst the local populations. It is understood as being propaganda. And so, I mean, this needs to be brought into the, uh, the current context, but as well as when you're looking at the US-China relationship. One thing which I didn't notice and, and sort of ask you why, um, if we look back to the evolving nature of Chinese uh, public diplomacy, especially digital diplomacy, uh, there's been quite an evolution from around about 2010, because before 2010, uh, Chinese public diplo digital diplomacy was basically found on microblogs, these uh, Chinese-based mechanisms, and it did not really dare to venture into things like Twitter, Facebook. Th these seem to be off, off limits. But now if we look at it, you got Chinese public diplomacy very active on Twitter. For example, if we look now, you, you can see this, uh, the, the foreign, uh, foreign affairs spokesman very active on Twitter uh, during this coronavirus uh, competition, if we say, between the United States and China. I, I think one last thing that I, I would say is it would have been really good if there was a, a short summary um, in which you detailed th this uh, and put into context um, the, the US-China relationship and make it more clearly understood. I mean, how it's evolved from 1949, which you start from the end of the uh, Chinese Civil War uh, until the present time, because it's e evolved constantly. and. You've, you've, it's been cold, and then when the uh, when the United States you tried to ally itself with uh, People's Republic against the Soviet Union, and then, and you've had this whole um, Asia pivot, for example, so this reversal 
uh, it's been it hasn't been a constant relationship and i mean this, this can put into context why some of these particular projects have occurred at a particular point in time uh, because they serve a foreign policy need uh, at a particular time so i mean within the context of great power competition so to finalize i mean i enjoyed reading your dissertation i did uh, learn uh, from it and it's always good to see uh, a broad number of perspectives including ones which are not normally seen uh, especially if we look uh, at western academia these days it's quite uh, western uh, focused although china is one of these countries which is of growing interest most notably because of this uh, this open rivalry which, which is occurring now but, but which has been building up for at least 10 15 years so the dissertation meets the basic requirements established by order number 6821-1 of 1st september 2016 uh, the candidate deserves the award of scientific degree, candidate of political science in the speciality 23.00.04 uh, political problems of international relations, global uh, and regional development. Clause 11 of the aforementioned order by the author of the thesis is not broken. Thank you. Uh, dear colleagues, now let us uh introduce present to you uh the uh, uh review by uh, uh william Ivanovich Fokir, who's absent for a good reason has a, a positive gave a positive opinion as uh, the thesis studies uh, strategy of uh, public diplomacy of uh, china and the us has uh, and uh, how Chinese projects are working in uh, China and how uh, uh, the author set herself a number of tasks uh, which she uh, solved during the study. The methodology of the uh, study uh, seems adequate. And at that, uh, the author not only lists methods, but explains the meaning of each method uh, for the study of public diplomacy. That means that in Semen uh, consciously uh, conducts her studies and demonstrates the ability uh, for independent research. The author has demonstrated knowledge of the basic theoretical approaches to the study of public diplomacy in the modern world. Uh, she managed to link the conceptual part of her thesis with the methods of research of documentary sources and the interpretation. Uh, the study is based uh, on a wide uh, corpus of sources, documentary, uh, governmental documents uh, of the US, and this include uh, documentary and narrative sources, which uh, enable the author to make a systematic analysis of the source base introduction uh, in, uh, of documents in Chinese is the most important advantage of the work is uh, a theme of uh, research. Their presented case of documents allows to speak about the high level of reliability and validity of conclusions and judgments made by the author. And uh, also Vladimir Ivanovich uh, comments novelty and scientific novelty and uh, the study of the text of the thesis allows us to say that this study is a new complex and also has practical significance the author not only uh complies with scientific data and conclusions which are uh, present stage but also shows how the two powers use the soft power mechanism uh, cover uh, each other scientific novelty of the thesis in our opinion, it consists in the fact that the author proves that despite external similarity of means and method of public diplomacy, the actions pursue different, essentially different purposes and uh, it, it, uh, have different impacts because 
of modern world order and on the world public opinion. Uh, at the same time, Vladimir Ivanovich uh, uh, lists a number of uh, this, uh, despite these uh, advantages, the thesis leaves room for those who have not yet received development. Thus, in our opinion, the study would have been more complete if the author paid attention to some social studies or scientists of the two countries and some political assessments of leaders of the two countries. They require additional analysis as they reflect the real impact of public diplomacy and public opinion and changes in the uh, minds of the citizens. So studies are available in the scientific discourse of the US and China and allow for a more objective assessment of the role of public diplomacy in the formation of bilateral relations and influence on the process of building mutual understanding between the countries and emergence of political processes in the internal life of the society of the two countries affected uh, by these impacts. Sometimes such influence uh, is positive uh, when it promotes uh, interaction of cultures, sometimes extremely negative when it reflects an attempt to interfere in the internal affairs. Sometimes such analysis enables us to see that there's a different meaning or contradiction between stated goals and objectives. Unfortunately, such phenomena can be found in the public diplomacy of the US and sometimes China. These comments do not affect the overall positive assessment of the thesis, which is an original study on an important and relevant topic, and the scientific significance of which is beyond any doubt. Uh, the thesis by In Semen uh, on public diplomacy in foreign policy of the US and China corresponds to the main requirements set by the order of the 1st of September 2016, number 6821-1 on the order of awarding academic degrees in St. Petersburg University. And the degree applicant in Semen deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of political sciences, uh, specialty 230004, political problems of international relations, global and regional development. Uh, clause 11 of the order has not been violated by the author. Uh, member of the Dissertation Council, a Doctor of Historical Sciences, Professor, Head of Department of International uh, Humanitarian uh, Connections at Petersburg University, Pokin Vladimir Ivanovich. And in conclusion, I'd like to present the review of the Chairman of the Dissertation Council. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, on my behalf, uh, I have a, a high opinion of Inciman's thesis. And uh, in my opinion, uh, the main contribution of the work is uh, by using new documents in Chinese and English. The author uh, has uh, enriched understanding uh, of the term of public diplomacy in uh, its practice of uh, in, uh, foreign policy of US and China. The, uh, the author defines uh, uh, the, uh, public diplomacy as uh, projects implemented by the governments in the sphere of information, education, culture, and digital technologies. Uh, advantages of the work include classification of concepts used uh, for the study of public diplomacy of USA in different uh, spheres of science. The author creates a logical uh, uh, net of such concepts as soft power, smart power, cultural imperialism, Americanization, dialogue of culture, strategic communication, uh, national brand, etc., and relates these concepts with such spheres of knowledge as history, political science, international relations, anthropology, cultural studies, sociology. The author introduces for the first time uh, a number of documents uh, issued by governments of China and the US. Uh, this uh, creates an opportunity to review uh, many provisions. And undoubted the uh, advantage of the study is the study of activity of American digital diplomacy in social networks of China is one of the efficient forms of public diplomacy of the US. Uh, general, I'd like to, to say that uh, the thesis shows that there are many aspects in the study of uh, foreign policy and public diplomacy of uh, US and uh, China, which require close study. 
the success of this study is explained by the fact that it's based on new uh, so, uh, source-based documents of US and uh, CNC government enable the author uh, to take a new look at the, and uh, in cement managed to create a, a complex picture of the diplomacy of the two countries. Yet, despite the overall positive impression made by the thesis, uh, the thesis uh, still has a number of drawbacks. First, uh, in the introduction, the author focuses on description of methodological base of the study, uh, page six, but at the, at the same time uh, forgets uh, the theoretical basis. In our opinion, this is uh, an omission because uh, you start wondering uh, what exactly the theoretical works in sphere of international relations and public diplomacy that became the basis of this study. Secondly, in the introduction, uh, the degree uh, uh, of development is, uh, would, is good to recommend to the author, uh, analyze the source base, uh, its system and classification, when uh, writing the work, uh, the author used unique material. And in the introduction, uh, it's not mentioned at all. Uh, the uh, uh, section on uh, third, we think uh, the, uh, it is the part of the thesis, uh, the work corresponds, uh, page 39. Uh, this question, uh, uh, should be uh, answered by an expert group, uh, but not by the uh, degree applicant. Uh, fourth, in the introduction, uh, should not disclose in the introduction. This uh, introduction takes too many pages, uh, which is uh, very long. And uh, in 2-1, uh, the author is given uh, a complete list of organizations, government uh, organizations, uh, which are not uh, agencies and public diplomacy of the US, US public diplomacy, a redition of the author. But on the other hand, uh, the, it looks like encyclopedia and unfortunately uh, describing functions of organizations, uh, the author doesn't give, uh, doesn't analyze. And this section is too descriptive. Uh, six in uh, three one, the title, of an educational programs are given in English. And we think it would be good to provide the Russian translation. Seven, the, the, I had questions about statistical data on page 41 about the number of uh, Chinese institutions included in Fulbright program. Uh, why the author didn't give uh, more recent statistical data? This is my question. Uh, yet, uh, these comments uh, have, do not uh, affect the overall positive assessment, uh, which is an independent study dedicated to uh, a relevant topic, it's beyond any doubt, and the thesis by Insimen, public diplomacy of China corresponds to the main requirements. Uh, set by the order of the 1st of September 2016, 6821-1, on the order of awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University, and the degree applicant in cement deserves to be awarded a uh, uh, degree of candidate of political sciences, special 23004, uh, uh, political problem, international relations, global and regional development, uh, uh, clause 11 of the Obama Shonda has been violated by the degree applicant. In Simen. Uh, now I'd like to give the floor to you uh, to answer uh, comments. Uh, thank you, Konstantin Arsenevich. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all the members of the Dissertation Council uh, for very constructive and good comments. I summarized all your comments and uh, I will answer them briefly. And I say I'd like to, I will try to answer your comments briefly. First, I would like to start with comments uh, made by uh, technical uh, camps in the US. Uh, this is a very interesting cat, uh, a question, uh, but also very sensitive. Uh, there are 
seminars um, uh, had uh, influenced the development of a position in foreign countries and uh, many documents appeared after publication of WikiLeaks and uh, such countries around Russia, Latin America and Asia. But we relied on the official uh, US documents uh, and the study reflected the details of this instrument of US public diplomacy. And as for uh, many terms in English, many terms uh, change their meaning in translation and uh, this is especially true about uh, public diplomacy of china about differences in uh, propaganda uh, this uh, remains the most complex uh, point and uh, your other comments i will uh, certainly consider in the future uh, in my future uh, research. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Simons. Uh, second, I'd like to answer comments by Vladimir Ivanovich Fokin about uh, sociological studies. Uh, this wasn't uh, was outside the scope of my study and the existing uh, social surveys only indirectly reflect uh, the uh, uh, topic of my research. As for the questions of Olga Vladimirovna Lebedeva, first of all, uh, I would like to say that uh, it's necessary to trace the uh, connection between the uh, internal and external uh, audiences. So thank you for this interesting question. I will certainly continue my research in this. But at this stage of our work, we focus on the external uh, target audiences. And in our work, uh, we focused on the external target audience. Uh, but uh, as for the internal and external political factors, this is a very interesting question and I will certainly continue uh, studying this issue. As for uh, second comment of Olga Vladimirovna about the role of Chinese foreign ministry, uh, there is in the is, no, is public diplomacy, uh, there's no coordinating organization. Uh, that is why, as I already mentioned today, and the Chinese foreign ministry doesn't have this as a, no, it doesn't act as a, lay, as a uh, connection link. On the other hand, China uses numerous non-governmental organizations to conduct public diplomacy. And I think uh, the Chinese government should pay attention to that next. As for paragraph 2.1.3, uh, I'd like to add, uh, um, so we studied the tools uh, which are obviously used for political purposes and a variety of programs uh, can uh, broaden the focus of our research and as for is uh, is necessary to uh, outline the range of programs faced by Chinese in our opinion our work we studied problems of the mechanism of public diplomacy of the US and China as well as the problems of implementation of various projects and now let me answer uh, the comments made by Konstantin Arsenevich. Answer it. Uh, so let me answer. My answers are as for the theoretical works, uh, we devoted a chapter to theoretical works identifying well known concepts on a wide variety of scientific disciplines that study uh, public diplomacy political science, international relations, history, etc. And as for uh, the question about uh, introduction, it doesn't give good overview of the degree of development. We believe that the cited works reflect the extent to which the topic has been studied. There are a lot of works that have, uh, uh, do not relate directly to our uh, theme. 
and researchers very often repeat each other that does not promote uh, historiographical basis. That is why we limited ourselves to pointed out only the uh, main iconic authors. So revealing concept in the theory, many researchers have served as a source. As for section 2.1, uh, here we focused on analysis of important organizations in the U.S. and uh, Chinese public diplomacy and, uh, and about statistical data on page 141. Uh, these data uh, were given for two periods, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008. And uh, since uh, these periods, the number of uh, the uh, author gave in the next paragraph general characteristics for the uh, last 30 years. As for questions asked uh, by Victoria Ivanovna Zhuralova, I have already answered some questions. Uh, and as for uh, the last uh, chapters, uh, the US digital diplomacy in China is new and uh, not sufficiently poorly studied area. The text focuses on the most important aspects of the US digital diplomacy, but uh, we will, your uh, suggestion is very, uh, uh, is, is very important, uh, valuable, and we will, I will certainly take it in my future research. Uh, as for uh, the comments and questions made by Professor Lagutina Maria Lvovna, uh, is uh, many important site materials are so diverse that the list of sources took more than 50 pages. So to reduce the length of my thesis, uh, the bibliography contains, include the list of internet sites. As for the name uh, of the Chinese initiative, one, uh, one uh, belt, one road, it's fully called Silk Road Economic Belt and the 21st Century Maritime Silk Road. And Belt and Road is an abbreviated uh, name in Russian. It's often spelled as uh, one belt for China uh, or one belt. So officially, uh, the, in Russian, it's called one Belt and Road in English. And in Ra the Russian name is Agim Pois Agim Pul. Uh, remained unchanged. It's possible to find this in the official side of the president of Russia, uh, speech of the International Forum, one Adin Pois Adin Put, on the 26th of April 2019. And the analytical works of the uh, uh, famous, well known Russian think tank, Russian International Affairs Council, uh, for 2020. And once again, I would like to thank all the members of the Dissertation Council for their valuable uh, comments. Uh, hopefully, I answered uh, all your questions, and thank you very much. Uh, that's, uh, uh, dear colleagues, next, according to the procedure, uh, we, have, uh, we have to read out questions sent by email. Uh, but uh, at this point, uh, we have not received any questions, so let us continue. And I would like to give the floor uh, to the academic advisor of INSUMIN, uh, Natalia Alexandrovna Tvetkova. Uh, dear Natalia Alexandrovna, please tell us about the degree implement and her work. Do you support all the provisions of the thesis? Which of them deserve special attention in your opinion? Uh, welcome, Natalia Alexandrovna, dear colleagues. I don't have much time uh, as the academic advisor, but approximately three minutes. And what I heard the discussion itself and the conclusions uh, made by INSEMEN, I think they are uh, have high degree of novelty and reliability. And thank you for this discussion, for your questions. Uh, we formed uh, new, we created some new knowledge. The thesis, of course, is a uh, result of many years of hard work. I mentioned already in the beginning, Insemen has been our student uh, for, uh, for during the past uh, 10 years. Uh, and 
I uh, she um, uh, tried very hard to write her thesis. Of course, uh, uh, no uh, text uh, is ever complete. Uh, but I believe that, and let me I repeat myself, that the degree of the applicant succeeded to identify the most relevant projects of public diplomacy of the US and China. And she is the first, uh, this is the first thesis which reflects uh, what uh, level has the digital diplomacy in China achieved and how China is trying to catch up with the US uh, to copy uh, its uh, public diplomacy model. Uh, here, China is uh, catching up with the US. Uh, this is not revival. Uh, China is in the, the initial stage, and then Semen was able to identify very interesting organizational issues. Uh, it's quite uh, complex. Uh, Communist Party Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs uh, is impossible. Uh, there is no single body uh, which uh, implements uh, different various projects. There are, uh, uh, there are many managerial issues. Uh, but uh, she was able uh, to grasp uh, this intellectual thought. And Insemen uh, is the first researcher who managed uh, to trace this American activity in China and Chinese activity in the US. Uh, generally, how comparative studies are written uh, Chinese public diplomacy or American uh, public diplomacy. The author tells everything about. China, but uh, here, this penetration of the two countries as a young scientist, uh, she managed to stay focused, uh, which, in my opinion, deserves. Uh, and uh, so I'd like to uh, pay attention to her achievements and uh, to uh, uh, give high uh, marks to her work. So the, uh, my time is up. Uh, thank you. It was very interesting uh, to listen to your discussion. Thank you very much, Natalia Alexandrovna. Dear colleagues, uh, since we are working in the remote access mode, uh, let me ask if you have any uh, council members or others present, or maybe the degree applicant, have any unanswered questions? Uh, uh, I would like uh, to uh, check if everybody can see and hear. Maria Volna, can you see? Yes, I can see and hear everything. Mr. Ivanovna, you okay? Yes, I'm okay. And, uh, can you see? Uh, yes. Uh, Dr. Simons, can you hear us? Yes, all's fine. Uh, in that case, let us continue. And let me ask you, uh, before uh, we proceed to voting, uh, we may we can take a technical break to discuss the results. Dear members of the dissertation council, do we need, or we can proceed straight to voting? I think we can proceed straight to voting. So let's go straight to voting. Uh, we, let's go straight to voting. Okay. In that case, uh, dear colleagues, dear guests, uh, I. Uh, put the question of awarding to instrument the degree of candidate of political science, academic specialization 230004, political problems of international relations, global and regional development, to the open individual vote. Let me remind you that a decision of the dissertation council should be considered positive if more than a half, but not less than three members of the council present at this uh, meeting voted for it in accordance with Article 23 of the order. 
Council member Lagutina Maria Lvovna, your opinion? Uh, I support awarding the degree uh, to the degree applicant. Uh, Council member Shurablova Victoria Ivanovna, your opinion? I support awarding the degree. I am for. Uh, Council member, thank you. Lebedeva uh, Olga Vladimirovna, I am for awarding the degree. Uh, council member Gregory John Simons, your opinion, please, Greg. I, su I support the candidate. Yeah. And myself, Chairman Pantarev Kazunastenovic, also support this work and uh, I am voting for. Thus, dear colleagues and guests, uh, let me announce that out of five council members, participating in voting, uh, five voted for, uh, uh, no one voted for, no one abstained. Their decision to award to instrument the degree of candidate of political science, academic specialization 230004, political problems, international relations, global and regional development has been made. Dear colleagues, since our meeting was held in the remote access mode, once again, I'd like to ask you, do you have any questions or anyone present have questions, comments on the procedure of the meeting? Uh, no. Uh, we, I we would like to thank the chairman. Uh, thank you very much. And in conclusion, I would like to give the floor uh, to the uh, degree applicant for her closing remarks. In cement, would you like to say something? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to all members of the dissertation council. Thanks to you, my defense took place. And secondly, I would like to give big thanks to my beloved uh, faculty and uh, University of St. Petersburg University, uh, where I wrote my thesis. Uh, thirdly, I would like to thank my academic advisor, uh, Natalia Alexandrovna, for her help and support, not only uh, while uh, performing my work, but also in uh, science and life. I would like to give big thanks to the translator for uh, their work and uh, translation and uh, in the end I would like to uh, thank my parents who always support me uh, during this 10 years the 10 years I spent in Russia thank you very much everybody thank you in cement uh, on our behalf on my behalf and on behalf of other council members I would like to congratulate you on this important milestone in your life so we all congratulate you and we are very happy for you uh, dear colleagues uh, the i declare the session closed and i thank you for your participation please stop uh, online broadcasting thank you congratulations